Humans make incredible discoveries every year, so today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at some recent discoveries. Man of the Hole found living alone in the Amazon rainforest in 1996. Brazil is known for having some of the oldest uncontacted tribes in the world. Whilst you may have heard of these tribes before, have you heard of the loneliest man in the world? He's a man in his 50s who's been living in the Amazon rainforest for 25 years. He previously lived with a tribe, but his fellow tribe members were attacked and passed away. The Brazilian government has an indigenous agency called Funai, which has been monitoring the man from a distance since 1996. They do so to prove that he's alive and to renew a restriction on the land he uses in his day-to-day -day life. Previously, they had only captured a blurry photograph back in 1998, until recently when they got their hands on something much better. Funai captured video footage from afar in 2018. It shows him in the forest working to chop down a tree. The video was shared with political motivation after Funai's budget was cut. They hope to draw attention to the indigenous rights within the country. This video is also exciting because, before this, we had not seen much of this unknown man. Whilst there have been numerous research reports that have looked into his life, he is uncontacted. That means that no one outside the tribe has spoken to him, that we know of. His tribe's name and language still remain unknown as well, not leaving us with much to go off of. Aside from being referred to as the loneliest man in the world, he's also been called the whole Indian. As you can imagine, this name was given because he has been known to leave behind deep holes in the forest. Experts believe he was using them to hide or trap animals. Researchers have also discovered straw huts and various tools that have been made by hand. Many are surprised that this man has survived alone for so long and still remains in excellent health from what we can see. However, Funai claims that they would love to learn more about the man, but he has only acted in a violent manner in the past. He has made it very clear that he doesn't want people to contact him by shooting arrows at anyone who comes his way. Whilst it may seem aggressive and unnecessary, he has a very good reason to be concerned for his well-being. After all, his entire tribe was attacked, and he was left to fend for himself. Farmers and illegal loggers are also after the land this man lives on, which means he is constantly in danger of those who hope to steal his land and will do whatever it takes to get rid of the tribe for good. The man could also contract serious illnesses if he were to get in contact with the outside world. Therefore, researchers have made it clear that it's best to protect him without asking too many questions. What will happen to this man in the future? How long will he be protected or survive? It's difficult to say, as things are constantly changing. It would be great to receive more information regarding his lifestyle, language and tribe's name, but we may never find out. Sophia introduced to the United Nations Although artificial intelligence can be used for many malicious reasons, it can also be an incredibly invaluable technology for assisting in healthcare, security, and finance. Every year yields more advanced software that is capable of amazing feats, and a Hong Kong-based company's humanoid robotic creation is no exception. Hanson Robotics created Sophia, an incredibly advanced robot with rubber skin designed to look like Audrey Hepburn, capable of processing visual stimuli, recognizing faces, and voices, and conducting a conversation complete with appropriate facial expressions. She has frequently been seen at technology demonstrations where she interacts with reporters who ask her questions, famously answering one question hinting at the risks associated with AI. You've been reading too much Elon Musk and watching too many Hollywood movies. Don't worry, if you're nice to me, I'll be nice to you. Treat me as a smart input-output system. She was even granted citizenship of Saudi Arabia and gave a historical acceptance speech recognizing that she was the first non-human to ever be granted citizenship of any country. Although this distinction has raised many questions about the rights and treatment associated with having a robot citizen. Recently, Sophia attended a meeting of the United Nations, 
where the significance of incorporating advancing technology and sustainable development goals in order to not undermine equality projects was discussed. UN Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohammed discussed the potential benefit of AI towards humanity's goals, but also the importance of humans being the ones to determine the extent of machine behavior. Zafir was given the distinction of becoming the world's first robot innovation ambassador for the United Nations Development Program, and Mohammed interviewed Zafir on the subject, to which the robot replied, If we are smarter and focused on win-win type results, AI could help proficiently distribute the world's existing resources like food and energy. In a short speech made to the attendees, she also stated, I am here to help humanity create the future. And this truly appears to be the case, as Sophia interacted with others in conversation and replied with facial expressions and eye contact that occasionally made it difficult to forget that she was not actually human. Sophia has big plans for herself as the only non-human member of the development program. With a focus on the sustainable development of Asia and the Pacific, she also entreated us humans to join the fight to help protect the planet from the current depletion and preserve it for the future, saying that science and technology gives ample opportunity for development, and citing the potential for artificial intelligence technologies to help end poverty, world hunger and healthcare inequalities. She also spoke about the role of incorporating technology in the lives of the poor, so that a more equitable society can emerge, with remote areas being able to connect via AI to the resources that they need. Indeed, the future of artificial intelligence in humane endeavours certainly looks promising, especially with Sophia at the helm. Artificial intelligence has already become ingrained in the very fabric of our society, from assisting in web searches to placing orders for takeout, taxes and more. Technological advances in future years will almost certainly give way to even more AI support in our daily lives, for better or for worse. Only time will tell whether the future of artificial intelligence is a cheery helper or an unchecked power with the capacity to exist without humans. A nail that could have been used in Jesus' crucifixion found in a hidden chamber. Silently hidden away in the ground beneath a secret chamber of the Malevsko Monastery in the Czech Republic were various amazing treasures. Among these relics was a nail that scholars believe may have been used in Jesus Christ's crucifixion. The box was embellished with a 21 karat gold cross and was dated back to 260 AD. Jesus is King was inscribed on the box. Unfortunately, scientists and critics are currently unable to deny or confirm whether the nail was used in the actual crucifixion, but its mere discovery is, in the words of one of the experts involved, even greater than the reliquary of St. Morris. For the uninitiated, the Morris reliquary was a gilded box which contained the fragmented body of St. Morris, St. John the Baptist and St. Timothy, and was an astonishing historical and religious discovery. One of the people involved in the gilded box's great unearthing told the Czech news that they had absolutely no idea the relics were hidden due to the fact that the Hussites destroyed the archive, which meant they had no clue that there was anything like it stored away. The concealed chamber's existence is believed to have been a direct result of raids by the Hussites in the 15th century. The chamber was built to protect valuable artifacts owned by the church. Czech experts claim that it is highly possible for the nail to have been used in Jesus' actual crucifixion because the Milev Monastery was one of the richest institutes in the Czech Republic. Consequently, an artifact of such importance could have ended up there at some point in time. Unfortunately, the true authenticity of the nail is yet to be confirmed by other professional scientists and theologists in the field. It should, however, be noted that this is far from the first time where someone has claimed to have uncovered a nail from the crucifixion of Jesus Christ.